Welcome back, Soulful Society, to Soulful of Wellness, the multi generational podcast brought to you by two functional imperfectionists and certified coaches who deliver tips to live your most authentic, balanced, and anxiety free life. Today, we're talking about burnout. As in how to heal burnout, or better yet, how to prevent it in the first place. I wish I knew this sooner. So we have so much really good stuff, but so much going on in our lives right now that we're really excited about a lot of it having to do with this podcast and with the Soulful Company and all the little things we have in the works. And we are excited to present more of it to you in the near and also not so near future. But we're working very hard behind the scenes here to bring all this into being and feeling the stress of that, Mm -hmm. excitement and stress of all that. So we thought, what a fantastic time to revisit a topic that we talked about last spring, uh, last May. We talked about six tools for dealing with helping us through burnout. Mm -hmm. I felt like re-listening to this episode gave me the reminders that I needed. And I don't know if it's just spring where we just begin to add more to our plates because the earth is awakening again for those of us who live in, you know, four seasons on the East Coast. Yeah, we wake up, we come out of hibernation and we hit it hard, man. Exactly. We're like, the trees are awake. Okay, I'm awake finally. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's add all the things and do the things. And I feel like this episode really has some soulful tips that'll keep you just uh, in tune with yourself while dealing with that. Yeah, because you can do it all. You just can't do it all at the same time. So take on some fun, new, exciting stuff like we're doing, but give yourself permission to let some of the other things fall to the wayside for a little while. And in this episode, we talk about what you can possibly choose to let drift off a little while you focus on other things. Exactly. It's definitely not a stereotypical type of inspirational episode for you to keep going or work really hard. It's more about supporting you in your evolution, especially during times where you've got a lot going on and giving you those six life tools on how to manage it so that you're not left feeling like crap, frankly, and feeling exhausted and unable to even do the little things in life, the little tasks, or even just simply taking care of yourself. So we hope that this episode today supports you on your wellness journey, reduces your stress. And if you like it, of course, we'll leave us a review or an email giving us your feedback. We love you. Let's get to it. Today's episode came about as a result of a workplace wellness workshop that's part of Soulful Inc.'s corporate wellness offerings that we ran just this morning. It was truly an enlightening experience. So much fun. It was. Really cool to see in-person work, in-person coaching and learning. It was so refreshing. Yeah, it's been a while. We had two dozen overextended sales professionals in a conference room, each at one point creating a personal wellness wheel to allow them to see which area to focus on next to achieve the most wellness gains in the next three months of their lives, it became evident that we're all struggling with at least some degree of overwhelm right now. So today we're giving you six concrete tools to get you through the tough times. Please follow, rate, and review on the listening platform of your choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to us right now. 
apparently these reviews that people write are what the algorithm really focuses on to decide that you're enjoying the content and letting other listeners become aware that we exist in the world. If you need a little inspiration, you can take it from our most recent reviewers who we want to give a shout out to. The Babette is her name. She left us a review last week and said, Love these two. I'm so happy I stumbled upon this podcast. The topics resonate and these women are bright, relatable, and a joy to spend time with. Keep up the great work. With gratitude, Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Uh, you keep I'm up the great work. <laughs> oh my God. We actually got two reviews since last week. So also thank you so much to Lady Professor Deb, who said, well-rounded and positive duo. I came across this podcast and have enjoyed listening to these ladies talk about so many aspects of wellness. I appreciate you, your honesty, and your personal connection to the topics. And we appreciate you, Lady Professor Deb. Thank you. And thank you for mentioning that you appreciate our honesty because sometimes it's a little cringy to <laughs> bear the soul, but we do it for you. So thank you for letting us know being relatable. Thank you, resonates. Deb. You flatter us. We are giving you some soulful tips and shortcuts today that allow you to honor yourself during a busy or stressful time in your life. Fellow imperfectionists, you do not have to strive to be the best version of yourself at all times. This is coming from your coach. I'm going to say that again. You do not have to strive to be the best version of yourself all the time. We all go through seasons where we need to take some shortcuts, do the minimum, so we can recharge our battery. I really appreciate hearing that I don't need to be the very best version of myself at all times. This reminds me of when people say, just do your best. Do your best on everything. That's all we can ask of you. Just do your best. And that's exhausting. It's simply impossible to do my very best effort on every single thing I do every single day. Or maybe I am doing my best right now with the level of energy that I have due mm -hmm. to the circumstances of my life. I yeah. Best at that moment. Different than my record best. I feel my like that's... overall best ever. I feel like that's such an American thing. Like strive to work hard constantly... Do your best. Do never your best. give Do up. Your best. It's Do like, your best. okay. But then we reach a point where we are burnt out. I actually experienced clinical burnout. Like I got my labs back and had to work with my functional medicine practitioner on this. My adrenals were having like the saddest time. My adrenals were like, dude, give us a break. Like we're working overtime and now we're shutting down and all the cortisol is just firing. Yeah, you can only ask so much, and when things work harder and harder and harder, they're going to quite literally burn out. Everybody needs a reset. Everything needs a reset. Right. And even if you aren't experiencing clinical burnout, you could be experiencing a really stressful time in your life or just a busy season. Right? We've talked about this multiple times in the last few weeks. It feels like this whole year has been a busy season. So no wonder it's leaving us like feeling burnt out and just like frayed. Like I've been feeling so irritable and it's almost like the fuse is super short. So we also want to prevent it, right, is best case scenario. But we want to be able to give you some tools to help turn it around quickly. After our workshop today, Kaylin and I sat outside and had a bite to eat and just reflected on our experience and we like to jot down some notes right afterward when it's all still fresh in our minds and what changes might we want to make for the future or might what might we want to add in the future and we're talking about it and talking about this overwhelm and potential burnout situation and then we thought let's bring the soulful society in on this one yeah let's chat about it for the pod yep so we brainstormed a list of things that we've experienced or shortcuts we've implemented in the past, little life hacks that have worked for us in a pinch. 
And you know yourselves. You know the busy times. You know when you're starting to feel underwater. Break one or two or even more of these out. Save yourself some effort. Get your life back in balance. And know that all seasons pass and move on. And you won't always feel quite so overwhelmed. Yeah, these are these are fun tools because they're sort of out of the box and you'll notice the theme is giving yourself permission to meet yourself where you're at. Yes, at times to not do your very, very best on each and everything. Mm-hmm. If your schedule is just overwhelming, too busy, you've got a lot of items on the to-do list, consider throwing some of these on your to-do list. All right, first tool. Tool number one, easy foods. Just make it easier on yourself, you know? Like, get some pre-made meals. Trader Joe's frozen section is great. Limited dishes, right? Like sandwiches that you can eat. Sandwiches. Sandwiches. Like Staple of my life. I don't know what I would do if the sandwich had never been invented. I'm not sure what I would eat half the time. And you don't even need, like, silverware and plates. Like, maybe you can dirty a knife to cut your avocado. But you get the point, right? You don't have to make these. Give yourself permission to not make all these elaborate meals and just exhaust yourself. Right. And you save on the cleanup because you don't have all those pots and pans and baking dishes and so forth to clean up. The kitchen's not a big mess. These are pretty, like, believe me, I can make a pretty elaborate sandwich without making any mess at all. These are quick to make, pretty quick to eat, honestly, and pretty easy to eat. I love it. Like, the theme, I love it. The theme is minimal effort here. You're exhausted, you're tired, you're burnt out, and you're trying to get back to homeostasis. So, another tip underneath this is one of my favorites when I'm feeling totally overwhelmed. Order your groceries. Grocery delivery. It brings me joy. I'm not kidding. I sometimes hesitate to let myself do that. I know. It's the a mindset splurge. It's a splurge. Being, right. The mindset being that's something I'm perfectly capable of doing. Mm. Heck, I used to do the family grocery shopping when I was in high school because I don't know what I was thinking, but I actually thought it was fun. <laughs> and it's not about that, though. It's about getting value for your time right now. Mm. So if you can get the groceries delivered and have one less thing hanging over your head, it's not forever. Same with eating the meals that maybe aren't your absolutely best, freshest, most produce-packed meals. Remind yourself, it's not forever. It's not your forever eating plan. It's in the times of too much to do too little time to do it. Tool number two, make your clothes management easier. And what we mean by this is like, obviously your clothes are going to start piling up when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed. That's just like the last thing that you want to do, right? You've had a long day, you take off your clothes, you change, and they might be sitting or you're traveling a lot and it takes you a few days to unpack. So create an organizational system where you have maybe two hampers or bins, one that's actually dirty and one that is not quite dirty yet, but you're not, you haven't put it away yet. Or I, okay, I'm I'm just going to be honest here. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat it. Sometimes I only wear the clothes for a couple hours for whatever reason. I don't want to put them back in the drawer because I feel like they're not truly clean and I don't want them to somehow contaminate the clean clothes, but they're also not dirty. I can absolutely have more wear time out of them before I do laundry. But if I put them in with the dirty laundry, then they're going to lose their wearability. So that's where the other laundry basket comes into play. If I do laundry before I wear them again, they go in the laundry. If I want to wear them again before I do laundry, they're available for that. There I said it. No, it's very, I do the same thing. It's very relatable. Okay, I felt like I was like bearing my soul No, there. no, you're not. You're not. I do the same thing. I wore my brand new sweatpants after my bachelorette for several days. And I didn't want to wash them yet because they were that brand new fuzzy, yes. you know? When you get a sw- That's brand a whole new sweatshirt or sweatpants. Other, Ooh. the first wash. Yeah. They're never the same again. Ever. After the first wash. That's so sad. 
True. Tool number three. Trust the people you care about. Be honest with them and tell your loved ones when you're at capacity. You can even create a template for yourself, a template response. For example, just letting you know I'm going to be a little antisocial for the rest of the month because I'm going through a busy season. See you on the other side, Illy. <laughs> okay, so we have never tried the template response before, but I can see where that could come in handy. Yeah. You can spend a lot of time perseverating on your decline because as perfectionists, as people pleasers, we don't want to disappoint anyone. We don't want to let them down. We surely don't want to make them mad at us. Right. Don't waste time. Just explain and trust. Yeah. And trust in the do not disturb button on your phone. Mm -hmm. Trust in that. So yeah, make a communication plan. Don't feel the need to increase your stress by overthinking the aspects of your social life. Like this part of your wellness will may decline during this period of time when you're feeling burnt out. And that's okay. But if you feel like you want to get in front of it a little bit, tell your loved ones your capacity. And remind yourself, it's not forever. I liked this. So we also learned this. Don't waste time being resentful for people who are inviting you to things and asking things of you while you're burnt out. Just simply communicate. It's so true because you feel irrationally like emotional. It's like, oh my God, that it's not even personal, but it's like right. another email or like another request for me to do something. Are you kidding me? Another wedding to go to? Okay. Yes, I'm being ridiculous. I'm getting invited to a wedding. That is a blissful, happy occasion. And I actually am thrilled to be invited. But when I'm feeling like I can't handle one more thing and I get the invitation or the ask, I, I do have that complete bizarre reaction it's so to weird, it. so weird, right? Like, can't handle this. Yeah. Like, like I'm kind of mad that the person wanted me to do something nice. Which is so silly. No, it is so silly, but it's like a natural human reaction. And that is also like a signal to yourself that you are burnt out. Because logic brain, mm -hmm. your logic yeah. brain, which is being totally clouded up by your burnout and stress, is like, oh my God, you love this person. You love what exists. It's going to be awesome once you get there. It's so beautiful. Or like, the, I'm just rolling with the example you're using. And your burnout is just like this, like a hanger monster. Or just like this, yeah. you know? Your ah! burnout's telling you this person's trying to break yes, you. Yes, They're the straw yes, yes. that broke the back. Oh my God, is this little monster friends with the inner gremlin? Wow, we got a lot of beasts to tame. Absolutely. A lot going on inside you. So then what is this gremlin called? The burnout gremlin. Who's like, ah, all your friends and family want the most out of you right now. Or is the burnout gremlin an arm of your inner gremlin. It just sees this opportunity because your inner gremlin is always looking for an opening, totally. an opportunity because it's always there. It's just not going to waste its energy if it sees that you're in a good place yes, and strong yes. enough to say get lost. Yep. So it's waiting for a weakness. And maybe this is a particular arm of the inner gremlin that says, ooh, ooh, totally overwhelmed. <laughs> Her defenses are down. We're just going to, put it's going to be funny watch this like we're just going to tell her that everyone hates her and that she should feel really insecure right now and she should hate herself for being angry she got invited to something or or tell her everyone loves her but they're not going to because she's saying no and they're going to turn around and hate her now because she's disappointing them and she's letting them down and she's not going to their event there you have it the ender gremlin it's nasty it's got multiple arms all kinds of unwell messages for us, but don't listen. Just acknowledge and say, yeah, get lost. Tool number four, set predictable chores. You can have a designated day where you get those chores, those household chores, those to-do list items knocked out. I've heard it called sanitary Saturdays. That one personally doesn't really resonate with me. 
because I don't like the implication that I wasn't sanitary <laughs> leading up to it. Um, I also don't like too much all at once. So I don't like thinking I'll put all this aside and then knock it out on Saturday afternoon because then it gets really daunting. Just the way my mind works, I prefer to do one activity each day for, let's say, 20 minutes. Uh, So maybe Mondays I throw laundry in. Well, that's what the Soul Society is about. Do what works for you. I feel like for me, if I'm going through burnout, Yeah, I might be like, okay, you know what? Tomorrow is laundry day. Make a ritual, get a cup of coffee, blast some music, put a TV show on and get it done. But like, I don't know if I could handle planning my chores out to that T, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. I think the benefit, though, comes in not having to make the choice. If you decided Monday is laundry Tuesday is buy groceries, right. so forth and so on throughout your week. Then you just don't have to debate, oh, should yep. I do that? I should do that. But maybe I can do that tomorrow. And then you waste all this time. You could have put the laundry in by now. So it's just a no-brainer that Monday you do the laundry before you go to bed. Just do it. Exactly. No, that makes total sense because you're essentially just giving yourself grace. You're right, right? I don't have to a deadline. Do, yeah. yeah, you're giving yourself – I work well with deadlines. Deadlines really work for me – To get shit done. This is another instance of where the inner gremlin's coming in. Because it's sort of like, wow, you haven't cleaned your apartment in five days? Are you kidding me? But this tool allows you to be like, I'm cleaning this aspect of my apartment on Wednesday. Like, I just can't handle this right now. Like, also, this is another opportunity for the inner gremlin to come out when you're feeling extra frustrated and negative emotions while you're burnt out. Because let's be honest, you're having like, pretty much a hormonal imbalance when you're this stressed out. So the physicality of it all, it makes sense. And that physiologically affects your mentality. So the inner gremlin is like, (laughs) I'm blaming the inner gremlin on your emotions, but it's causing you to, to freak out. For example, me looking at the dishes when I'm already burnt out is like, oh my God, every little thing is something huge. Yes. It's the... The trigger, it's that little spark to the dynamite. Mm-hmm. Yes, short fuse. So these tools are really allowing you to like give yourself grace and take the time to recharge your battery by doing what works for you and taking some shortcuts. And you just know there is a plan in place. It's all going to get done. It's just not going to get done right now, but take solace in knowing that it will all get done. Tool number five. Sleep. Let yourself rest guilt-free. I think the natural inclination, I know my natural inclination, when I'm in a busy cycle, whether it's a busy social cycle or busy because of my work, I pull from sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I'm only going to get about four hours of sleep a night for the next 10 days. No. No. (laughs) <laughs> don't pull from sleep. No. Pull some. I don't want to spoiler our final because I, I love our final tool. But don't pull from sleep just because that's the obvious one because you're thinking, oh, nothing gets done when I'm asleep. Wrong. A lot gets done when you're asleep. Really important biological and mental recovery is happening while you're asleep. Don't think you can do without. Napping counts too. Just do it guilt-free for this period of time. Set a timer if that's what it takes to be able to do it with a clear conscience. To say, I am going to rest for one hour now. And then have a timer. And when the timer goes off, you get up. But you don't have to lie there thinking, oh, I should be doing this. How much time? Oh, if I start this at this time, I can finish it this time. Nope. If you're deciding sleep is the best way for me to move forward, set the timer, turn your brain off as best you're able, and when the timer goes off, you're back at it. Love it. Should we jump into our last tool? Yes. Don't pull from one area of your wellness wheel to compensate for these busy times. Mm -hmm. I just said my 
go-to area to pull from is sleep. So when I get a crazy busy time, I try to keep everything else in my life pretty much the same. Workouts, I don't work out more, obviously, but I don't really work out less. Joy. I still have my scheduled activities that I've worked hard to cultivate that area. I don't change a thing. I pull pretty much, historically speaking, exclusively from sleep. And that goes way, way, way down. But as we know, that throws everything else out of balance. So our final tool is shave a little off each area. Yes. So this is like not going on... Like you're not throwing one thing out the window on your wellness wheel. You're throwing just a little bit uh, of, of each aspect of your life. I've had clients who their sort of go-to compensation area is fitness or movement. So when they have the busy times, they just don't work out at all. They forego even the walks. They just think like, oh, okay, this is just going to be a crappy month for my fitness level. I'm just not going to get any movement in. No. Have some of everything, but not your target amount of anything. And it's temporary. That's sort of my little uh, refrain that I keep coming back to in this episode is, no, it's not a long-term solution. Definitely. It's an apply as needed. For sure. So we hoped you learned a thing or two about how you can creatively heal your burnout, prevent your burnout from taking over your entire life, and get back to feeling like you again. Yeah, try to stay in balance. When you're out of balance, Shave a little off all the different areas. It's not perfect. It's not the best you've ever done. But I think we established at the top of the episode, you can't always be your personal best in all areas at all times. Give yourself the grace to be a little less for a time and you'll get back there. You always do. And you will again. Thanks for joining us for another week of wellness goodness. Peace, love, and light. Peace, love, and light. The Soulful of Wellness hosts are certified health and wellness coaches. This podcast is intended to inform and entertain listeners on their wellness journey. This podcast is meant to enhance, not replace, listeners' care from doctors, therapists, or other medical providers. Soulful.